Welcome to this Footprints in American History. Today, we're going to talk about a midwife crisis. Okay, the person we're going to talk about is Orlena Hawks Puckett. Now, you probably have not heard of her unless you've spent time in Virginia. She's actually very recognized in the state of Virginia, the capital. Uh, they have an institute known as the Orlena Hawks Institute in Asheville, North Carolina. It's designed for strengthening families, especially between mother and child. It's very dedicated to the development of family. Now, the reason I want to tell you this story about a midwife crisis is because what a remarkable woman this person was. I felt that she deserved to be honored as a part of American history. She's more a forgotten part of American history because she didn't do something that necessarily would be recognized on the big stage. Now, Orlena was born around 1844 in North Carolina. She married, at the age of 16, a guy named John Puckett. They ended up moving to near an area called Groundhog Mountain, and then uh, from there they ended up moving short distance away. All of this is near Fancy Gap, Virginia, which is off the Blue Ridge Parkway, up in the middle of nowhere. It's out in the country, a little bit north of the North Carolina state line. Okay, what makes Orlena's story remarkable is that they decided to have a child. Well, what happened was the child died after only a few months. From there, she had 23 more children, all of which were either stillborn or died within a few days of birth. Now, what must have absolutely hurt her and cut to the bone for her and her husband was that a lot of the people in the nearby areas thought that maybe they had murdered their children. The truth, truth was, it was actually something called RH homolytic disease which is a disease which unfortunately children do not survive after childbirth. So it was a very cutting thing for her to have had 24 children and not a single one survived. Now, a lot of people would have gotten bitter. What happened was, in her case, she decided she wanted to do something that would more make a contribution. She loved children, and you're going to find out just exactly how much it did. Her love for children was out there. She ended up becoming a midwife. Now, ironically, she really was illiterate. She didn't know how to read. They don't even know if her name for sure was Orlina. It could have been Orlean. Uh, there were other different spellings that were similar to it, but, but she's mainly recognized under the name Orlina, but it's still not to totally clear. She decided she wanted to help women with childbirth. She started this, she was almost 50 years old when she decided to become a midwife. And she started traveling all over, as far as 20 miles away, to help children in the act of childbirth. Now, what's remarkable was that when she died in 1939, 1938 was the last childbirth she helped with. But over 1,000 babies are believed to have been delivered by her. Every single case, the mother survived, the child survived. All of them grew up to have prosperous lives, or at least reasonable lives. She did this because of an act of love. Now, this act of love was actually something that was actually quite remarkable. In fact, just not because of Orlena, but it was so recognized the importance of midwives and childbirth in those days, late 1800s, early 1900s. You have to consider, you know, out in the middle of nowhere. A lot of these women had to go out there and help. A lot of times because you're so far from the nearest hospital, the nearest place where a doctor might be, that you have to have proper instruments. And we don't even know exactly how what instruments she had. Now in Eastern Kentucky, that recognition of the situation created a school where they were training women to be midwives and helping them with horseback to give proper training to them so that they were able to help develop it. And that school, by the way, for midwives is still in existence today. You can even go online and take courses to learn how to be a midwife. So a lot of this was so important. And what she did as a rec was recognized because she, developed, she delivered literally over a thousand babies. And this was beginning right around the age of 50. So Orlena's house, incidentally, she lived in a two-floor house. They ended up tearing it down because of construction of the Blue Ridge Parkway. However, one of the cabins that was on the property is still there at mile 189.9. 
in Virginia near Fancy Gap if you want to go see it. However, I wanted to recognize Orlena, and here's gonna, I'll have the information on here of the name of her institute and what the recognition she got in the state of Virginia. In the meantime, I hope you enjoyed this story. It's so rare that you hear stories from a lot of women that made contributions like this to history, yet the fact that after she had lost 24 children of her own, people thought that her and her husband had possibly killed the babies when in actuality it was a disease, and then here she turns around and becomes a midwife and delivers a thousand babies, all of which survived. That is a remarkable story. And if you like this story, please give us a big thumbs up, like and share, subscribe to the channel, and if you get the chance, ring the bell. That will give you notifications for future videos. We have a lot of other great stories coming up in the near future. I hope you guys have a great day, fair winds, and following season. Just a bit outside.